Most of the time we discuss crisis communication as an external function. However, it would be a strategic error to think about risk and issues management along with crisis communication as purely an external function. If organizations fail to build their capacity to respond from within, they are much less likely to be effective. Over our next podcast, we look inside the organization to better understand what can influence how effectively an organization can respond to crises. Just as organizations don't exist in vacuums, crisis management and crisis communication is not only about the environment and stakeholders outside the organization, but those within the organization who make the decisions and execute strategy. For this reason, we will adopt an inside-out approach to crisis response and begin by examining the concept of organizational capacity relative to crisis management, and we'll explore the challenges of crisis management, how an organization's crisis history, and its industry affects its capacity to answer the question, what does success in crisis response really take? Previously, I differentiated between crisis management as the material response to the crisis and crisis communication as the focus on stakeholder relationship management. I also introduced Lucemore's theory of crisis management that identified four essential crisis management challenges. First, internal power struggles. Second, linking communication to efficiency instead of value. Third, the capacity of crises to encourage conflict. And fourth, the emergence of crises discouraging collective responsibility, that is, no one wants to be blamed. While Lucemore's theory of crisis management has been influential in the last couple of decades, one of the key elements that is identification of the challenges and factors influencing successful crisis management demonstrates is that effective communication is likely to predict the success or failure of crisis response efforts. Internally, managing our teams and organizations relies on creating a productive work environment and externally the same themes focus on stakeholder identification with the organization and goodwill towards it despite the crisis. If we look to another theory, Stack's multidimensional public relations model argues that effective crisis communication has three distinctive qualities. First, effective crisis management ensures that public relations functions are institutionalized. This means that in order for crisis management to be successful, Stax argues that communication professionals need to be included as an equal part of the strategic decision-making team. This doesn't mean that the communication professional is responsible for solving the material problem, if there is one, that's associated with the crisis, but it does mean that in a cross-functional team, it's essential to have communication expertise as part of the process. Stack's argument about the importance of having communication expertise in crisis management isn't unique. For example, Chen's analysis of the Chinese government's response to the 2008 Sichuan earthquake demonstrated that when communication was institutionalized, made an inherent part of this decision-making process, the government's capacity to respond to the crisis was substantially improved. Chen compared these findings to the relatively lower levels of strategic decision-making institutionalization across Europe and North America, arguing that when PR falls into mere supporting or advisory roles, the organization's capacity for effective crisis response is actually reduced. In fact, reflections on the failures of government crisis response during Hurricane mm -hmm. Katrina, as well as reflections on the post 9-11 era and case studies across industries like the public sector, financial services, travel and tourism, fast food and manufacturing all demonstrate that institutionalization of communication within crisis management and decision making is essential to the success of crisis management and corporate strategy. Second, Stax argues that effective crisis management must take into account the type of organization the plan will manage. Crisis planning and management for corporate firms, nonprofits, government schools, and so on all need to be customized to the particular organization and circumstances in which the organization is operating. For example, after the 2010 BP Deepwater oil rig explosion in the Gulf of Mexico, one of the embarrassing realities that came to light was that just about all of the major oil companies, not just BP, had problematic crisis plans. In the congressional hearings on the explosion, 
This was cited as one of the reasons that the material problems were slow to be addressed. Very simply, the industry didn't have the right sort resources ready to deploy. No matter the particular situational factors, Stack's argument focuses on the impact of tailored crisis plans and crisis management as being essential to success. This has been demonstrated across industries like financial services, where unique information and needs and efforts to rebuild trust and confidence in financial organizations was absolutely central after the 2008 collapse. Consistently, the narrative is that industry and organization-centered strategies are essential to success. Third, Stacks argues that effective crisis management develops targeted messaging. Tailored communication is nothing new, but in the context of crisis response, organizations have to ensure that their crisis responses are aligned with their current practices and stakeholder concerns about the crisis. In terms of capacity building, this suggests that the crisis management team needs to be directly connected with all the communications activities. One of the reasons for this is that crisis management requires adaptive, information-rich responses to facilitate both internal and external stakeholder actions to help manage the situation, risk, and relationships. But more than that, in an era where information seeking is high and information sharing happens across platforms, it's vital that organizations be viewed as credible sources of information for all key stakeholders. If we take these three qualities of good crisis management into account, that an organization has institutionalized its communication function, it adapts its crisis response to its own needs, and that it develops aligned and targeted messaging, then organizations should adopt a management structure that focuses on stakeholders, facilitates a good flow of communication, and allows excellence and adaptation to the situation. There have been other studies suggesting that if organizations adopt stakeholder models of corporate governments, it improves their ability to be more proactive and accommodated in crisis management. The implication of this is that when corporate governance focuses on the needs of stakeholders, it affects everything else in the organization from contract development to management behaviors. Organizations following these principles are much more likely to avert crises or at least mitigate their impact. And this supports Heath's body of research indicating that good crisis management emphasizes an integrated management approach for organizational decision making involving prevention, mitigation, actual response and recovery, and explicitly includes advisory personnel, internal and external communications personnel, and functional management teams linking normal business operations and crisis response. So it suggests that as a crisis emerges, instead of assembling a crisis response team, the team is already in place and has been working together across routine activities as well as risk mitigation and crisis management activities. There are several benefits for organizations whose management structures facilitate this kind of ongoing risk mitigation, stakeholder-centered strategy, and cross-functional decision-making. First, the obvious one, risk mitigation activities, that is issues management, minimizes or eliminates crises before they emerge and also improves crisis response. Second, this kind of integrated management improves organizational learning and is especially beneficial for small and medium-sized organizations that are at least able to weather significant crises. Third, these structures improve the purposeful exchange of information within and between organizations, the media, and other stakeholders before, during, and after crises. Fourth, it can help to improve coordination of crisis management between often competing interest groups within organizations. For example, there's often a disconnect between communication recommendations for responding to issues and crises and legal recommendations for response. So when the organization's decision-making process is set up to facilitate coordination between departments and interests within the organization, competing and often contradictory recommendations can be minimized, both improving the material response as well as the reputational outcomes. In short, when an organization's structure and management approach integrates issues and crisis responses routine, it provides a source of sustainable competitive advantage that allows organizations to move beyond being crisis prone to crisis prepared. 
More than that, this kind of an integrated management approach not only builds the capacity of the organization to respond to crises, but to perform more ethically before, during, and after crises. Now let's take a look at the industry impact on crisis capacity. To put it simply, an organization's crisis capacity is also influenced by the type of organization that it is and the industry it's in. But why is this? Why does the type of organization affect crisis response so much? In part, we have to consider an organization's industry because of the influence of structure, infrastructure, relationships, social environments, and even stability as being strongly related to the industry that the organization's in. So the industry is likely to influence an organization's experience with crises as well as its reaction to them. Clearly, industry contributes to an organization's capacities, identity, and even its reputation. There is no more clearly evidenced example of this than the banking industry after the financial crash of 2008, where the industry's reputation created credibility problems throughout the industry, no matter the particular financial institution. But also, there's good evidence that industry identities provide organizations with different communication needs and opportunities when they're in crisis. Research suggests there are two additional ways that industry is often considered in terms of its influence on different organizations' responses to crises. First, industries affect organizations and their base experience with crises. For example, Ellsbach's analysis of the California cattle industry examined the construction and effectiveness of verbal accounts across the industries it faced different crises and identified industry-level kinds of responses and ways of explaining what was going on. Another industry that is often studied is the airline industry, with research centering on crisis response to specific events or broad industry actions to changing conditions, finding similar kinds of responses again across the industry. And there are similar findings across different industries like with travel and tourism, automobile, manufacturing, financial, sports and entertainment, and technology, where we can see industry level responses and norms emerging. The other way that industry is often considered within crisis communication, reflecting some of the more common industries analyzed, is by examining industry in terms of crisis communication within crisis-prone versus non-crisis-prone industries. Previous research has identified seven industries as crisis-prone, including finance and insurance, professional scientific and technical services, information that is telecommunications, computer hardware and software, transportation and warehousing, manufacturing, mining, and travel. Consistently, these findings suggest that a history of crises, including at an industry level, changes the way that organizations react to crises. In the end, it's important to remember that while crisis management and crisis communication aren't the same, they are inextricably linked. The data for the last 15 to 20 years really clearly indicates that in organizations where communications or public relations functions are an integrated part of the decision making, management and strategy process, those organizations are significantly better able to prepare for and respond to crises. Put simply, a stakeholder model for governance places communication as a part of the decision making process and not merely an add on advisory role.